Hello and welcome everyone. We are in Cologne at Gamescom 2019 and today Nintendo presents a more in-depth look at Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. Joining us today we have two very special guests. We have the creator of the Dragon Quest series, Mr. Hori. Hello Mr. Hori, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> and we have the, pro the producer of this particular chapter in uh, the Dragon Quest series, Mr. Okamoto. Hello, Hi. Mr. Okamoto, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> uh, alongside our special guests, we have from Nintendo of Europe, Filippo. Hey, Filippo. Hi, Nims. Hi, everyone. Now, Filippo, you're going to be taking us through some gameplay and showcasing some new uh, areas in this particular title. Yes, we want to travel a bit through all, many of the locations of uh, Dragon Quest XI S. Excellent. And we have Mina. Hi, Mina. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Min everyone. <laughs> Mina is also from Nintendo of Europe and is going to be our interpreter for yes. today. Awesome. So I think we should just get straight into this game. Now, Mr. Hori, yes. could you give us and for the viewers watching at home a brief introduction into uh, the story for this particular installment in the Dragon Quest series? で、まず堀さん本体取るのあのストーリーについて簡単にご紹介いただけますかそうですね。あの本作は勇者の物語です。山黒村です。だった主人公は自分が勇者であることを知らされてで王様に会いに行くんだけども王様は彼はお前は
actually go inside uh, Gallopolis. And uh, as you travel through the world of Dragon Quest XI S, you will see all of these locations that are actually inspired by real world location. You can uh, immediately see also from the outside. And from the fact that we are also in this desertic uh, area, Gallopolis has uh, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern influence and inspiration. And uh, now that we get inside, I hope that I can show you that. But I think it's very clearly visible from the very start. Ah, wow. You can see, yeah, you can immediately see the influences, the architecture uh, inspired by uh, Middle Eastern locations, the domes, the arches, the decorations, the palm trees, of course. <laughs> um, there is this uh, souk style market oh, yes, over there. Yes, souk. With, and uh, like even like this pattern, this decoration, like the geometric the patterns. Yeah, 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 for sure. Really nice. Uh, this uh, circus actually plays a role in the in the storyline and also has this beautiful Middle Eastern inspired decoration. Oh also the feathered style. That is exactly. very cool. <laughs> exactly. And uh, also if you look at that, uh, the Egyptian inspired uh, statues, the obelisk, uh, it's really all a lot of different influences from Middle East in one city. There seems to be a lot of inspiration in this particular area. So, Mr. Hori, how did you find uh, inspiration to create these sort of environments? Have you traveled through these locations or locations like this yourself personally? And um, what would you, how would you say this has influenced you in when making games like this, like or making a city like Galopolis? ホリソンゲーム内の世界観ですが、インスピレーションはどこから得ているのでしょうか。実際にご自身であの旅されたりとかしたんですか。そうですね。あの僕自身ね、いろんなところにあの旅をしてですね。その都度インスピレーションを受
えー、では岡本さん、現在のパーティーメンバーについて、少しご紹介いただけますか、はいえー、と青色の髪の色をした青年がカミュというキャラクターで、えー、このカミュですけれど、あのとあるちょっと罪をあの背負っておりまして、その罪のを償うために、えー、勇者と一緒に旅をすれば、えー、その罪食材が果たせるのではないかというところで、いまあ、一緒に旅をしているという状態です。So the blue-haired one here is called Eric. He has committed a serious crime in the past, and by traveling with the luminary, he hopes to atone his sins. Okay. Hi. Eh, ato desne. Eh, akai fuk to midori no fuk no eh, jose character ga sore zore Veronica to Senia to yu character des. Eh, Vero, eh, fta ri wa desne, shimai nan desu kere do, chisai fo, Veronica ga emoto no yo ni mieru desu ga, chotto shita, ano, secret ga aru no de, eh, ゲームをプレイしてですね、その謎というかを解いてもらえればなと思います。And the two girls here, the one in the red dress is called Veronica, and the one in green is called Serena.、Uh, these two are sisters who are helping the luminary. And、um, the smaller one, Veronica, looks like the younger sister, but there's actually a bit of a secret behind this.、Ah, so I、okay. hope you can find this out by playing the game.、It's、holding on to those secrets,、yes. Mr. Akamoto, <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I, I particularly like uh, um, Veronica's personality because、uh, she's, like, uh, she's not going to you know, like, uh, uh, ease out. Like, she's going to make jokes, she's going to like, tease the character.、Oh, okay. she's, she's quite a funny character. Okay. <laughs> In your party when you fight.、Uh, he's、uh, an artist, a、uh, multi talented artist. He actually comes from that、uh, circus that we saw in、uh, Gallopolis. And、uh, let's say he's just as good with swords as he is with, as he is with words. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was good. <laughs> good use of wordplay there. I like that, Filippo. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, trying. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. You know more about the characters than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> okay, let us. Rest、uh, until dawn, and、uh, on the sunrise, we can move on to our、uh, next、uh, section. And actually, for this next section, I'm not going to use my horse, I'm going to actually travel、uh, via magic. I'm using Zoom, which is a teleport magic that allows you to see,、uh, visit locations that you have been to before. And uh,、um, what we're doing now is the keeping the theme of. Riding, like instead of riding the horse, we can ride、uh, monsters in this game.、Okay. Uh, sometimes you have to do it, for example, in dungeons to、uh, go over certain obstacles, or you are required to do it in certain story、uh, beats. But、uh, in the Nintendo Switch version of the game, there are new and exclusive、uh, rideable monsters、uh, which are super cute. We actually have already shown this particular one at E3, but you know, I just want to make sure that everybody、okay. looks <laughs> at the awesomeness <laughs> that is the Slime Knight. Ah, right. There we go. <laughs> And、uh, as we are in another fight, I'm going to、uh, show you also a few more items, a few more,、um, a few more changes to the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So,、uh, first and foremost, we can.、Uh, Increase the battle speed.、Uh, the ultra fast speed is completely new for the Nintendo Switch version of the game. And if you fight a lot of battles, if you really want to you know, level up to the maximum possible level, you're gonna, you're gonna fight a lot. <laughs> so the fast speed、uh, will help you. If you look at the bouncing <laughs> of the slimes on the slime night,、okay. you can immediately see if I change speed now, <laughs> they're a little bit more active there. They、so、look super happy now. Yes. <laughs> Something else you can do. Actually, you can change your lineup as well. So, I have four active party members in battle, but I have a total of five. No? So, we want to give Silvando his,、uh, his time in the spotlight, of course.、Right. And we can move him here.、Ah. And in real time, without using, losing any turn, there you go,、uh, your uh, uh, lineup changes. On top of that, you can also give orders to your character. So, now everybody is set to follow orders,、okay. which means they just、uh, take my commands. Right. 
but uh, you can individually change orders to uh, a single character or you can tell everyone, for example in this case to show no mercy. <laughs> and show no mercy just means that they will just go everything they can <laughs> to destroy the enemies as fast as possible. And the AI actually is pretty good at uh, uh, finding the best move to su uh, that suits your strategy and the orders that you give them. It's uh, really quite nice. Now that uh, I don't have to worry too much about the commands, <laughs> for example, we can uh, focus on listening to the orchestrated soundtrack. And uh, uh, again, the orchestrated soundtrack is completely new for the, uh, this version of the game. It's only on Nintendo Switch. On top of that, uh, you can also hear sometimes the character uh, uh, talking during battle. Uh, they make exclamation, they talk to the enemies, they talk to each other. Uh, of course, m uh, the storyline is all voiced. Uh, here in battles, you, we are hearing the English voices, mm. but also exclusive to Nintendo Switch version of the game. For the first time anywhere, uh, we have Japanese voices as well. Ah. So you can play the entire game with Japanese voiceover as well. I'm too. sure many fans watching at home will be very excited to hear that. Yes, but then this is what we came here for. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, look at that. <laughs> there you go. That's a slime night. Oh. And uh, uh, I love the fact that uh, of course, the slime is happy and smiling, <laughs> uh, as usual. The slime knight, they're a bit less... Oh, oh actually, no! <laughs> they, wanted to, they wanted to save, his, save their oh, friends, no. actually. <laughs> but I think we're going to make short work of them anyway. <laughs> like the great sword attacks of uh, Elf 11, our character. By the way, yeah, we called it Elf because it's in German, 11. And uh, the Luminary is also known as 11. Very well thought out there, Felipe. Yes. I like that. <laughs> and we leveled up as well. So, not, to, not too bad, actually. Yeah. I'm not too mad at these Slime Knights. <laughs> so anyway, like you see the Slime Knight holding on for their life, and you're actually using the sword and the shield of uh, the Slime Knight. So I'm trying to show you that, for example, here, just like with the horse, you can trample small enemies. Ah, with right. the Slime Knight, you can use the sword to, uh, uh, to defeat smaller enemies. Of and course. careful to not get too close because you're going to obviously another battle. Yes, of course. Yeah, you have to <laughs> learn each ride, each uh, different monster ride has a bit of a different uh, movement speed, uh, different uh, 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 abilities they have. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of learn a bit how to use them. Right. So now for our uh, uh, next adventure, actually it's beautiful. We see just uh, uh, Puerto Valor, uh, Puerto Valor over there, which is another city. We're not gonna go there. Just okay. Yet. We're gonna go somewhere else, <laughs> but it is definitely a nice place, inspired <laughs> by Spain. Ah. Uh, and what actually I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom to yet another area of the game. And uh, as I said, as you travel through this world, there is really a sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, you see all of this location; it feels alive. Um, I'm going now to one of my favorite locations. Uh, I am, I'm Italian, so this is the uh, location that is inspired ah, okay. by Italy. I see, I see. <laughs> and uh, it is uh, called uh, Gondolia, so okay. I'm pretty sure that uh, Italian viewers out there already know uh, what the, the city looks like. <laughs> Where the inspiration comes from, I yes. see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now that we get into the city, if you have uh, ever been to Venice, ah. you will uh, recognize you will recognize the city, the architecture, more like uh, uh, bricks, for example, the beautiful uh, red uh, houses there, all of those hooks, people dressed in uh, uh, like maritime clothes, <laughs> like sailors. Uh, <laughs> um, there is also like uh, the tents over there and uh, there are like clothes hanging from clothes lines. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> across, uh, you know, uh, hanging across buildings, it's really, really beautiful. <laughs> And actually, uh, what I love, apart from, as I said, the appropriate clothing, uh, here characters have uh, uh, use Italian words while they speak, for example. So, povero me here means poor me. Oh. <laughs> uh, and if I speak to this guy, actually, I think he will say something I say quite often, which is uffa. Uh, which is what we say when we are a bit annoyed. Do like, you know uh, what? I feel like I've heard you say that before. <laughs> you, mo you most probably have. <laughs> it's really interesting that these there's different uh, accents and stuff happening in different yeah. areas. Mr. Okamoto, can you tell us a bit more about these unique characteristics uh, of the different areas? Okamoto-san, 
で,で作ったホムラという里があるんですけれどそちらの方はあの日本のイメージを出すためにセリフが五七五の俳句の,あのリズムで喋ってたりします。So, as you see now in Gondolia, people speak with Italian words and Italian accents. And as you saw before in Gallopolis, people speak with a bit of a Middle Eastern accent. Ah, right. And we're not showing the village today, but in a Japanese inspired village called Hotto, people speak in haiku style, so in 575 five rhythms. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> なるべくそれを感じさせないようにあったかい世界を作ろうと思ってあのグラフィックも,もうしゃべるセリフもなるべく人間っぽいセリフをしゃべらせて工夫したんですよそういう思いがですねこの海外版の翻訳にも生かされているのがすごく嬉しいと思ってます、はい、so, Over 30 years ago when I started making、uh, my games computers were seen as very cold machines and I wanted to add warmth to these machines So, I would add these fun graphics and fun wordplay all over the game. And I'm very happy to see that even in the overseas localized versions, you can still see these fun wordplay in all over the game. It's, I mean, it's definitely visible in this title. And I just want to say that the game looks absolutely stunning. It's so colorful and it really feels like you're going on such a, a journey in this game. So, thank you so much for, to both of you. You, you smile like a, like a slime basically <laughs> when you play Dragon Quest because everything's so colorful and so happy. <laughs> Even the monsters that you defeat, they're usually funny. Like, speaking of puns, one of my favorite monsters in the Dragon Quest games is uh, um, a wizard that is a cat. And so it's called、oh. Meow Magician <laughs> in English, which of course makes perfect sense. Do we, do we know what, what the, the Japanese name for that is, Mr. Okamoto? Meow Magician. Neko no Magician, みたいな猫魔導かな。猫魔導のこと言ってるのかな。そうだね。猫魔導ですかね。猫魔導。<笑>猫魔導。Okay. There's also a pun in the Japanese. Oh right, I see. I'm sure fans who obviously understand Japanese will understand that pun. <laughs> yeah, puns are hard to translate. Yeah. One to one, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, we want to show、uh, something else here.、Um, you can of course play the whole game in this beautiful 3D、uh, rendered location with all of these colors, but、uh, for the first time in the West. Taken from the Japanese、uh, 3DS version of the game,、uh, the, you can play the entire game in 2D mode.、Oh, uh, wow. And in, in, in the West,、uh, uh, outside of Japan, the Nintendo Switch version of the game is the first and only version that has this possibility. And、uh, we want to show a bit of that now. Oh, I'm very excited to see this. So, are you gonna, you're, are you going into. You're gonna change. Into yes. Basically, you have to save、uh, your game and then you restart from a story chapter. Oh, I see.、Um, from a story chapter into the 2D world. I, okay. So, Mr. Hori, why did you decide to include both 2D and 3D modes in this particular installment? Hori san, the title is 2D, 3D, and the other one is not going to be a good one. So, I'm going to be a good one. 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 ことになってるけどもやっぱりその 2D が良かったって人もいるんでその歴史を感じ,あの感じたためにですね 2D3D 両方で遊べるモードを入れたんですね。So,、um, when I first made、uh, Dragon Quest games,、uh, the graphics on the computers were not so good. So, we only had 2D. And now, after all these years, it's taken for granted that these games are in 3D. But I do have comments from my fans that 2D is also good, or、uh, people like to feel the nostalgia in the games. So, that is why we have included both 2D and 3D in this title. I see. And speaking of nostalgia, as you just said, I'm feeling very nostalgic <laughs> looking at this right now. This looks absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it feels very nostalgic.、Yes. There you go. Classic sprites.、Uh, I love the sprite work. I love it. It's still very colorful. You can still, you know, you can recognize all of the characters in their、uh, sprite version. And actually, I'm going to、uh, zoom back to Gondolia so that we can maybe, you know, make the comparison between what we just saw in 3D and the 2D version. So, I love the,、oh, wow. the map, of course. By the way, there are random encounters in the 2D version. In the 3D version, all the monsters are visible in, in, the, in the map. In the、right. 2D version, again, to keep tradition, you have your random encounters. Oh, I see. And I love the characters being as big as the city in the <laughs> overworld <laughs> yeah, map, of course, which is quite typical. You know, <laughs> if you played uh, games, uh, Dragon Quest games, for example, on Super Nintendo, that's the, exactly the way they look. So, we've gone back into Gondolia. Yeah, we're in Gondolia now. And that 
it, it looks very much. You have the canals, you have the houses, uh, you have uh, all of the people speaking Italian. It's really, it's really uh, uh, almost one to one. Uh, it, lo it looks so cool. Uh, Mr. Okamoto, what was the biggest challenge in making the world of this game both 3D and 2D? Um, what, bes well, besides obviously the time it would take to make both <laughs> worlds, what would you say represented the biggest challenge for you? え、岡本さん、この 2D、well, one thing is the size of the cities and these maps. Uh, so for the sizes, uh, it's completely different in 2D and 3D. I see. So we had to make some changes to uh, where to simplify or where to actually make into detail. Okay. And also make some adjustment to the distances the characters have to walk through. I see. え、感情だったりとか動きっていうのを3D <笑> And another thing is that for the event scenes, in 3D you can see the facial expressions and you can really see the emotions of the characters quite easily. But in 2D you only have very, very simple movements, <laughs> as you can see. see. <laughs> and uh, we had to add some text to the 2D version to explain the exact ah. same event. So in the end we had to manage two completely different texts for the exact same event scene. So that was quite hard to manage on our side. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> In, even the characters here in, in, uh, in Gondolia, they have additional text uh, in the 2D version. Like this is the Ufa guy from before. He had a, a little bit more text than before. One thing I wanted to point out, I was riding gondolas before, uh -huh. uh, and these are the 2D gondolas, <laughs> <laughs> which of course they keep the retro feel and the sprite feel. Uh, anyway, both in 2D and in 3D, uh, riding gondolas in Gondola is much cheaper than doing so in okay. <laughs> Well, Guaranteed. <laughs> I'll take your word for it being Italian, Filippo. <laughs> Anyway, we are now going to another location, the last uh, location we want to show in this uh, presentation, and this is uh, Tikkinton. Tikkinton is a very special place. Uh, it's uh, the place where uh, the Tokel reside. These are these uh, white uh, spirit kind of characters. I think we have one over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a Tokel, <laughs> exactly. You see them all over the world of uh, Dragon Quest XI-S, <laughs> and uh, uh, they allow you to uh, do something very special. Uh, <coughs> if you go into this room, there are all of these books, and all of these books, they take you to uh, different Dragon Quest games. They, uh, you ah. can see a snippet of past Dragon Quest games. Ah, that's, that's interesting. Mr. Hori, in many Dragon Quest games, you've included the possibility to travel to different worlds of, of previous games. Could you tell us why is that, and what gave you the inspiration to do so? え、ホリーさん、あの、ドラゴンクエストのゲームの多くで過去作に旅ができるっていう機能が含まれていますが、このようにしているのはなぜでしょうか。そうですね。あの、歴代のドラゴンクエストをプレイした人にとってのなんか
And uh, Pavo, for example, if people have played the game, was an important character there. Uh, the characters here in Yggdrasil, this angel kind of looking characters, were definitely uh, some of the protagonists of the story. Ah. And it's just beautiful that you can uh, go back to Yggdrasil and uh, the, the observatory there and uh, see the world, of, uh, <laughs> the world of the past games. But actually, yeah, these are all the books that allow you to travel to the previous games. And uh, this is Tickington, and as I said, the last uh, place we want to show of the game. Okay. But actually, we have some more announcements to make. Oh, I believe, Mr. Okamoto, you have some special announcements for, for the viewers watching today. あの、そうですね。I think you're very excited to play the game now, and uh, we would like to announce that there's a demo version now available on the eShop. Ah, very good. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure everybody watching at home is super excited to hear this. <laughs> yeah, well, the demo that is available now, so please go download it after you finish watching this video. <laughs> uh, it uh, allows you to play for quite a while, actually. If you're a Toro, you can play, uh, I think, even more than 10 hours. Oh, wow. Uh, if you really want to complete everything. <laughs> and the cool thing with uh, a game so big and a demo so big, um, Square Enix has included a save data transfer. So if you play the demo and save your data, then when you uh, purchase and play the full game, you can pick up just from where you left off which is, I think, a pretty nice feature. You can, you know, get a bit of a jump start, yeah. basically, <laughs> uh, uh, on, uh, on the world of Dragon Quest XI S. Definitely. And, of course, as we've come to the end of the gameplay, uh, Mr. Hori and Mr. Okamoto, are there any final uh, words you would like to give to the viewers at home? Oh. Oh. We actually have another announcement. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. We get ready for this. Now, Smash Brothers, Dragon Quest XI character, あの、ダウンロードコンテンツで追加されましたよね、フィリッパさんね。Filippo, uh, I think you know that the Luminary is also in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yes, yes, just been added very recently and it's already like uh, being talked about a lot uh, by fans of Super Smash Bros. はい、そちらでですね、なんとあの、先ほどお伝えした体験版をプレイしていると、スーパーショースマッシュブラザーズの方で、あの、こちらの4つ属のスピリッツが手に入るようになります。so, um, if you play the <laughs> demo version or the main game of Dragon Quest XI S, you can get a spirit of Toko in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Okay, so oh, you can use wow. the spirit, spirit mode. Okay, that's really Very cool. It's an Molaer ka kongo ano Nintendo san na hou kara hapyo ga aru to omou no de. Mo chotto omachi kudasai. In terms of the release date, yeah, it's not been decided, not been announced yet. So I hope you look forward to it. <laughs> so the uh, addition of uh, spirits in uh, Super Smash Brothers has not been announced yet, but what we know is that we have a release date for uh, uh, Dragon Quest XI S. Yes. Echoes of an Elusive <laughs> Age Definitive Edition, sorry. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, um, there is also something else that you can say. On the uh, 27th of September, when uh, the game launches, there will also be a uh, Champions Pack as a free DLC that uh, will uh, uh, give you, will unlock uh, clothing uh, and items for your characters that you can just get day one as soon as the game releases as well. So there's lots of exciting stuff happening for Dragon Quest fans and yes. anybody who's new to the series, there's lots of stuff to be checking out very soon. Um, Mr. Okamoto, Mr. Hori, are there any final remarks you'd like to leave for the viewers who are watching at home about this new title? あ、はい、えっと、改めてですね、今回のドラゴンクエスト Dragon Quest XI S includes both 2D and 3D, as you saw today, and you can also switch between two different kinds of music, as well as the voiceovers in English and Japanese. <laughs> so I think this one title you can play as you like. So I really hope you enjoy playing this game. Awesome. コンサートはですね、あのこのドラゴンクエスト長い歴史を本当にこの一分に詰め込んだようなゲームになっているので、これまでドラゴンクエストをプレイした人はもちろん。これが初めてっていう人もとても楽しめる作品になっているのでぜひプレイしてほしいですね今日はどうもありがとうございました<笑>
I have put the whole history of the Dragon Quest series in this one title. So I think the people who have played the series before, as well as people who are completely new to the game, can enjoy the rich content of this game. So um, I really hope you enjoy playing this game, and thank you very much for inviting us today. Uh, no, well, thank you very much, Mr. Okamoto, and thank you very much, Mr. Hori, for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. And thank you so much, Filippo, for talking us through some awesome gameplay. It was an honor. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Mina, thank you so much for your interpretation today as well. So for everybody watching at home, this was Dragon Quest XI-S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. We hope you enjoyed it and hope you are excited about this game releasing very soon. But from all of us here, thank you very much. We'll all see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.